what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the 31 Days of Horror. I am your host, Moon616, and thank you once again for stopping in, guys. Yes, 31 Days of Horror, Volume 7, Day 21, coming at you live. All right, so we're going to take it back to 1965 with a film that, um, that I think I picked up last year during one of the Warner Archive sales. And I was originally going to do this one on last year's 31 Days of Horror, but unfortunately, I couldn't do it the uh, 31 days because I was actually out of town for like the first week, and you guys know the rest. Um, so I decided to save it for this year. Super excited. I've always wanted to see this movie. I never grabbed the DVD because Warner Archive started putting out like their back catalog on Blu-ray, and it only made sense to hold out because the DVDs were always like, why pick them up? You know, they were, they were DVD-Rs. So you'd get the Blu-ray for a couple bucks more. Glad I waited. But um, anyways, yeah, so 1965's Two on a Guillotine, directed by William Conrad. Um, I, I, I want to say this is maybe one of his first directed films. Uh, William Conrad has been in like, he must have over 100 acting credits. This guy's been in so much stuff. But I always remember him from Jake and the Fat Man because he plays the Fat Man in Jake and the Fat Man. It was a TV series that was on from the late 80s to the early 90s and stuff like that. So I always remember his face. But he's one of those dudes, if you don't know the name, you probably recognize him. But yeah, so early directorial film from William Conrad. Two on a guillotine. Fantastic name, fantastic artwork. Yeah. So getting into the synopsis of this, this one. Basically, this one follows the main character, Cassie. Um, the movie starts out her as a infant. It kind of gives a little bit of a backstory. She's the daughter of a famous musician uh, named um, Duke Duquesne, and he's kind of like a, he's kind of a little bit of a psychotic magician. He he deals more in like deathly scenes and things like that and stuff. Um, so it kind of gives a little bit of background with his mom and with her mom and dad and stuff like that and then it jumps 20 years and 20 years later where she's now grown up attending her father's funeral he has passed away um and then we learned that her mother had actually left her father when she was still an infant and she was sent to go live with her auntie so she never knew her, her mother or father at all so now her father has passed away and uh she's you know at his funeral and stuff like that and she's basically standing to inherit his entire three hundred thousand dollar estate but there is stipulations the stipulation is that cassie now a full-grown adult has to live in this house for a week because duke has basically said that he is going to come back from the grave and uh you know to meet his daughter or whatever like that so um uh, so yeah, so she moves into the house. She ta she takes the uh, the responsibility of living in the house, and then yeah, it kind of goes from there. So that is the setup to the film. Now my thoughts on two from a guillotine. Now I really like the setup. I like this setup a lot. I like movies to do with magicians and you know kind of potentially haunted house type films, and you know just kind of quirky things like that. Um, like really, how could you go wrong with a title like two on the guillotine? Well. Let me explain where this movie goes completely wrong. Like I said, it's got a great setup. I like the idea that this magician is vowed that he's going to come back from the dead after seven days. And, you know, it's got this setup where she's going to be living in this house with all this quirky magician shit, like all this deathly stuff. And, and he does. Like, the house is basically kind of booby-trapped and stuff. She walks into the house, and there's, like, skeletons on these clotheslines, things. And then, you know, the whole house is rigged for sound with, like, all these crazy things. Like, there's a bunch of things that are happening and stuff like that. Now, where the movie really falters itself is, so there's another character named Val. He is a journalist uh, that works for a paper, and what she doesn't know when she meets him is that he is a journalist, and he's there to get a story at first. So he kind of moves in with her a little bit. She kind of takes it upon, you know, to have him move in, you know, just because it's a brand new house. She doesn't really know the area. She's kind of scared, blah, blah, blah. So he's kind of helping her out with things around the house. So, but this relationship, it blossoms into like, you know, kind of a relationship, an actual relationship. And this is where the movie kind of just goes completely south. Like I said, the beginning of the film starts out really good. It's got all this kind of haunting, all these things going around the house and stuff. And then the relationship blossoms. And there's like this scene where like the middle of the film is so long and boring. I hate to use the adjective boring, but really, like, they are at a carnival having their good old times, and they're, they're out going, they're out dancing and doing all this shit, and this goes on for a long time in the film, and then the third act comes, and we get, it gets a little bit more suspenseful once the aunt shows up, and she claims that she has seen, you know, her, uh, like, Duke, um, the magician, and, uh, you know, nobody believes her and stuff like that, and then it kind of gets a little bit suspenseful towards the end, and we get our resolution to the film, but the whole middle of the film 
is just, it's, it's like a dramatic, romantic, almost comedy in a sense. It's not comedy, but it, it feels like a romantic drama kind of thing. And it also feels like this film was just made by filmmakers that wanted to make a horror film, that knew absolutely nothing about making a horror film. They followed some of the tropes at the times and just kind of followed these kind of standard ways of making and writing horror films. And it really does show here, like the performances are fine for what it is and stuff, but it's the actual narrative. It's like the whole middle of the film just feels like it's just straight running time filler. It's just straight filler in the middle of the film. Like, I mean, this one runs 107 minutes. 107 minutes, man. It could have easily been edited down to at least 75 to 80 minutes. I'm not even joking. Like, there's so much filler in this movie. It's just, it's utterly insane to watch. Like, it's so frustrating. You're like, are they ever going to get back to the house? And, you know, are we going to get some haunted shit? Are we going to get some, you know, some actual suspense, some actual horror scenes in the film? Man, what a disappointment this movie was, man. I've been wanting to see this movie for years, and I just can't believe the end product. Like, there's barely any type of suspense. Like, the, I guess the third act, it kind of delivers, but on the suspenseful thing to a point. But the problem is with the third act, again, going back to horror cliches and, and kind of bad you know, typical horror writing and stuff, it's super predictable. I mean, you know exactly what's going to happen in this film. And maybe that is coming from a from a point of watching this movie in 2022 and seeing thousands and thousands of movies and kind of understanding where some of these things might go. And, and maybe not in 1965, maybe if you're watching this 1965, you wouldn't actually know where this is. this one might be going. But who knows? I still believe that even in 1965, people are like, eh, I pretty much know what's going on in this one. Um... Yeah, it's super disappointing. Like, I'm like, this artwork, you know, this fucking name, Two on a Guillotine, which kind of makes sense a little bit, but man, like, there's just a lot of false hope in this. There really is a lot of false hope. Um, some of the score is okay in this film. Like, it's kind of standard 60s, almost feels like library music at times, but there's this ridiculous shit that happens in the film. There's this white rabbit that is kind of metaphorical, I guess, a little bit throughout the film, that's kind of in the house. It's just roaming around the house. Well, every time they see the white rabbit, this, like, ridiculously cheeseball flute music comes up. Like, it sounds like all of a sudden you're watching a kid's movie. It's so ridiculous. It just, like, it takes you right out of anything that might be going on suspenseful or, or horrific or even narrative-wise. You're just like, what the fuck is with the white rabbit, man? It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, this one's actually starring... Um, Oh, what's her name? Yeah, Connie Stevens is the main character in the film, um, who plays Cassie. She is very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. I like her performance in the film because it's, it comes off as being very naive and stuff like that. Even Val, the guy that plays a journalist, is pretty good. Most of the performances are good, but there's just not enough horror elements here that can make up 107-minute running time. It's absolutely flabbergasting that this shit <laughs> was that long, man. Utterly the most disappointing movie of the first 21 watches of the 31 Days of Horror, hands down. Um, some of the other watches haven't been the greatest, but they were definitely more of into the theme of 31 Days of Horror. This one just, it's it, it has so much potential and it fails on all accounts. Four out of ten for myself, good performances. I like, um, you know, that it's shot in black and white. Uh, it looks good. The transfer is really fucking good on this. It sounds good. It's edited well. Like, there's all the specs of filmmaking are here. Like, it's done except for the narrative. The writing is bad. And just the lack of suspense and, you know, just, you know, for the setup. The setup, it fails. So, anyways, I'm done ranting about two on a guillotine. It just really pissed me off because I've been putting this one on for so long to watch. And it just turned out that it was just not a great one at all. Um... But uh, yeah, so I can't, I can't personally recommend this, but I'm not saying don't go out and watch it if you, if you might get something out of it more than I did, but who knows. Um, I just think this was utterly disappointing, very, very cliched, very predictable, and super boring. For a 107 minute film, come on people! Ugh, I feel like this chair is squeaking on me. Um, anyways guys, that's gonna do it here for day 21 on the 31 Days of Horror. I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully with a better one, but who knows? I am doing mostly first time watches, so I've been asked that actually a couple times recently what I've been what the theme was this. I never really have a theme, it's more or less I'll put films aside throughout the year and stuff. I'm like, I'll do this one for 31 days and then 
it builds up my pile and then all of a sudden I have 50 films, I gotta break it down to 31. So anyways guys, I'll check you guys tomorrow on day 22 and as usual, New